good morning everyone. Um, god morgon allihopa. Jättekul att se att det är så många som vill komma och lyssna på vad vi har planerat att starta för verksamhet. Um, jag kommer att börja på svenska uh, och sen kommer två av mina kollegor ta över och prata på engelska och beskriva då dels varför, varför vi är där vi är och hur behandlingsprogrammet på Castle Craig ser ut. Och för er som inte känner mig så heter jag Anna Sjöström och jag är vd för Stockholms beroendeklinik. Jag har jobbat i sju år för Castle Craig och hjälpt svenska patienter att komma till vård på slottet och sen hjälpt dem tillbaka igen. Och nu så sitter jag här och får lova att, att kan man säga, uppfylla en dröm som jag har haft under många år. Att faktiskt få berätta för er att vi kommer att starta en öppenvårdsmottagning i Stockholm. Vi tänker oss att det här seminariet eller webbinariet här på morgonen ska ta någonstans mellan 45 till 60 minuter. Det finns tid för frågor i slutet. Så vårt förslag är att ni skriver in dem i chatten och ni får gärna skriva på svenska. Så kan jag i så fall översätta om det är enklare att skriva på svenska. Och också tänka på det här att stänga av mikrofonen, alltså muta. För annars så blir det lätt rundgång i systemet. Och idag så kommer ni att få höra berättelsen om Castle Craig och Stockholms beroendeklinik. Och vad vi hoppas att kunna åstadkomma och bidra med. Vi öppnar. I alla fall enligt plan, någon gång i mitten på april. Så just nu så är vi i startgroparna att, att skapa det vi hoppas på kommer att bli ett viktigt bidrag till behandlingsutbudet. Eh, inte bara i Stockholm utan i, i resten av Sverige. För om det är någonting som det här senaste covid-året har lärt oss så är det ju att man faktiskt kan bedriva vård och av hög kvalitet även via länk utan att träffas fysiskt. Eh, när jag är klar med min presentation så kommer jag introducera Victoria McCann som är en av grundarna till Stockholms beroendeklinik och som också är eh, en del av familjen McCann som står bakom Stock eh, Stockholms beroendeklinik och Castle Craig och Mark Abrami som är vår eh, chefsterapeut på slottet. Då. Eh, men om jag ska börja med min historia eh, som jag skrev lite grann om i den här in det här mejlet som ni fick så började min historia med Castle Craig för sju år sedan. Då jag för första gången klev in för dörrarna på det här magiska slottet som heter Castle Craig. Som ligger ungefär 40 minuter sydväst om Edinburgh i Skottland. Jag visste inte speciellt mycket om, om Castle Craig innan. Jag visste faktiskt inte ens om att de fanns när de kontaktade mig och frågade om jag kunde tänka mig att vara intresserad av att jobba för dem. Så jag gick ganska förutsättningslöst in genom den här stora porten på det här vansinnigt vackra slottet i Skottland och blev golvad eh, av så många olika saker. Jag hade jobbat inom svensk beroendevård under ganska många år och känt att någonting saknades. Och när jag kom till Castle Craig så kände jag plötsligt hur pusselbitarna föll på plats. För här fanns ett integrerat beroende, en integrerad beroendevård. Det fanns allting under samma tak. Patienten behövde inte flytta på sig utan vården kom till honom eller till henne. Så här fanns allt ifrån avgiftning, medicinsk avgiftning, komplicerad avgiftning, långa avgiftningar till medicinsk vård, till psykoterapeutisk vård och tolvstegsprogram. I en eklektisk blandning av evidensbaserade program så skräddarsydde man vården runt varje patient. Och med väldigt stor värme och med stor omsorg om de minsta detaljerna. Ner till varenda tablett som delas ut och ner till varenda blomkruka som finns på Castle Craig. Så finns det en tanke och en omsorg om att patientens behov måste stå i centrum. Och jag kände väldigt starkt att det här var det jag hade letat efter länge. Och jag kände väldigt starkt att det här är någonting som jag vill vara en del av. Och där och då väcktes en dröm om att kunna erbjuda det här till svenska patienter. Och vägen dit har ju gått genom de här sju åren där jag har hjälpt ett stort antal patienter från Sverige att komma till slutenvård på Castle Craig Hospital i Skottland men nu också på Smarmore. Eh, hospital som ligger på Irland. 
Men det vi har känt hela tiden det är ju att vi skulle vilja göra mer. Vi skulle vilja göra mer hemma i Sverige och i Stockholm. Och det vi gör nu det är att vi bygger en öppen vård som bygger på samma holistiska approach. På samma idé om att man inte kan dela upp människor i kropp och själ. Eller psykiatri eller beroendevård eller allmän medicin eller psykiatri. Utan där vården kommer till klienten. Och vi gör det i öppen vårdsform. Och vår ambition är skyhög. Vi vill bli bäst i klassen när det gäller beroendevård i Sverige. Vi vill kunna erbjuda en beroendevård som är integrerad och som har väldigt hög kvalitet. Och för att kunna göra det så kommer vi bli tvungna att, att eller tvungna. Vi kommer att, att kasta oss glatt in ska jag säga, i samarbete med andra. Vi är en liten, på hemsidan står det, vi är en liten mottagning med en stor räckvidd. Och det är så vi vill ha det. Vi vill vara en liten personlig mottagning med en stor räckvidd. Och då kommer vi att vara beroende av att samverka med er. Att bygga nätverk, eh, att hänvisa klienter till där de kan få den bästa vården. Och ibland kommer det inte vara hos oss. Eller rätt så ofta tror jag kommer det inte vara hos oss. Utan det kommer kanske vara hos någon av er. Så att, att ni är så många som är här idag. Det är ett väldigt gott tecken och det gör mig väldigt, väldigt glad. Eh, vilka är vår målgrupp? målgrupp då kan man fråga sig. Ja, att vår målgrupp är egentligen alla. Kan man säga. Alla privatpersoner och alla organisationer som vill ha en beroendevård av hög klass. Och en hel vårdkedja. För det är ju det vi kan erbjuda. Allt ifrån enskilda samtal och öppenvårdsprogram i Stockholm. Till komplicerade avgiftningar och sluten eh, psykiatrisk vård i, i Skottland. Så vi är öppna för alla förslag. Eh, från både privatpersoner, arbetsgivare och också offentliga organisationer. Och eh, vi är en privat läkarmottagning så vi har en egen läkare som är specialiserad både i psykiatri och beroendevård. Och teamet då som vi kommer få eh, tillfälle att komma tillbaka till och presentera vid ett senare webbinarium består av erfarna psykoterapeuter och, och tolvstegsterapeuter som har jobbat länge och som har mycket erfarenhet av just den här målgruppen. Och precis som Castle Craig så är vi abstinence-based. Och vad betyder det då? Jo, det betyder att vi, målsättningen för våra patienter är total drogfrihet. Och det betyder ju till exempel att vi inte kommer att syssla med substitutionsvård. Och, men vi, vi tänker att nykterhet är vägen. Målet är någonting annat. Och målet för våra klienter och patienter som kommer till oss- det är att de ska kunna vara totalt drogfria och stå stadiga och trygga i en hälsosam livsstil. När det målet är uppnått, då tänker vi att då har vi gjort vårt jobb. Så, och vi tänker vara med på den resan från början till slutet. Och alla våra patienters resor kommer se olika ut. För vi kommer skräddarsy vården så att den passar just för den enskilda individen. En annan sak som vi väldigt, väldigt gärna vill det är att bli en mötesplats för yrkesverksamma. Jag har länge tyckt att det saknas en sån där vi kan träffas oavsett vilken organisation vi jobbar i eller om vi jobbar offentligt eller privat och ha ett kollegialt samtal om vårt arbete, om hantverket, vad som funkar och vad som inte funkar. Och det tänker vi kämpa hårt för att bli. Ett, ett, en mötesplats där vi kan byta idéer och prata om både det som fungerar jättebra och det som kanske inte har fungerat så bra. Och det vi kommer göra är att vi kommer att sparka igång här ganska snabbt något som vi kallar för speakers corner. Kostnadsfria seminarium en gång i månaden eh, på webben. Där vi då kommer att bjuda in externa talare men också prata själva. Med målsättningen att bygga nätverk och utbyta erfarenheter och kunskaper. Och jag är så himla glad och tacksam och stolt måste jag ändå säga över att vara här idag. Eh, det har tagit sju långa år och väldigt mycket jobb. Men eh, jag känner verkligen att det här är för mig personligen en, en jätteviktig dag. Jag visste inte det för sju år sedan när jag klev in innan för taket på Castle Craig att det här faktiskt skulle förändra mitt liv. Men det gjorde det. Eh, och jag är otroligt stolt över att få vara med på den här resan och att skapa en beroendevård där allting finns under samma tak. Och där det ska bli lätt för klienten att tillfriskna. Och jag hoppas också att få se väldigt mycket mer av er. 
i framtiden. Många av er har jag träffat eh, och har samarbetat med, men några av er är också nya. Eh, så att med de orden så tänkte jag byta språk lite elegant eller oelegant and introduce uh, uh, Victoria McCann, who is the next speaker today. Um, Victoria is one of the founders and board members of Stockholms Beroende Klinik. She's also part of the uh, family McCann, who once started and has successfully run both clinics, Castle Craig and Smarmore, for 30 years. And she will talk a little bit about her family's history and the history of Castle Craig. So welcome, Victoria. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. And lovely to see so many of you here. And good morning. Um, my name is Victoria McCann, and I'm the Senior Communications Manager at Castle Craig in Scotland and uh, Smarmel Castle, which is our treatment centre in Ireland. I'm also, um, as Anna mentioned, a founding board member of the Stockholms Berunda Clinic. I have to admit that I haven't been to Sweden yet, although um, I've been responsible for welcoming many of our Swedish guests um, and professional visitors over the years. I'm certainly looking forward to visiting soon as normal travel resumes and experiencing the culture of Sweden, which I've been learning about from a distance now. And actually, my father recently did a DNA test and apparently our family are 80% Celtic, but 20% Viking. So it seems that I might have some Scandinavian connections after all. On the subject of family, Castle Craig was founded by Peter McCann and Dr. Margaret McCann. And as you might have guessed from the names, these are my parents. They founded Castle Craig when I was six years old. So I grew up living on site at a rehab clinic, which not many people can claim. I'm proud to have been around for a large part of that journey, which has helped thousands of people enter a life of recovery and recover from their addiction to drug and alcohol. And I'm excited to be a part of the next stage in that journey, which is the opening of the clinic in Stockholm. I'd like to tell you the story behind Castle Craig and how it all came to be. Peter and Dr. McCann began their mission to provide rehab treatment for people suffering from addictions in 1982. Peter McCann was a part of the recovery community in London and had been impressed when he saw many people coming to AA meetings who had been to treatment centers in the United States. He saw that the UK needed this 12 step residential rehab treatment that they already had at places like Hazelden in the US where they had good outcomes. And he had gone to spend time in Hazelden to learn about their successful program so he could bring it over to the UK. With the knowledge he gained there, he set about founding Clouds House in Wiltshire in 1983 as a charity run residential rehab clinic. Residential 12-step treatment was a relatively new phenomenon in the UK at the time, and Clouds House gained a solid reputation, and it's still a successful, well-respected rehab clinic today, and is run by the charity Action on Addiction, which you might have heard of. Following the success of Clouds, they set their sights on Scotland, which is where Peter's family originated from. At the time, there was no residential rehab clinics at all in Scotland, and there was a great need for more treatment options for Scottish people. Peter spent several months traveling to and from Scotland and England, looking at properties, and eventually he found Castle Craig, which is based in Southern Scotland. Castle Craig was ideally situated in the beautiful hills and valleys and woodlands of the Scottish borders, and close enough to big cities like Edinburgh and Glasgow, which have good transport connections. The grounds and buildings were able to be converted to the treatment centre with all of the facilities needed, as well as a small collection of eight houses, which began as housing for our family and other staff and eventually became recovery gardens, which is where our extended advanced treatment programme is provided now. So the McCanns arrived in Scotland with a vision and a passion for helping those suffering from addiction. Together with a small team, they began upgrading the property and furnishing one room at a time, going to local auctions, furniture dealers, buying furniture that fit the character of the house, but was also appropriate for a clinic. And gradually, one by one, the patients came and they filled up the rooms and started to make up the community. Slowly but surely, the Castle Craig that we know, a place with positivity and a dedicated team of staff, therapists, doctors, nurses, admin staff, caterers, groundsmen, housekeeping was built. So I would say that with perseverance, luck, 
optimism and faith, Castle Craig was born, Scotland's first residential rehab clinic, and this was truly groundbreaking. Peter and Margaret Ann worked closely from the very beginning, with Peter trailblazing the voice of recovery in Britain among politicians, the media and healthcare experts. And Dr McCann led the medical care and therapy programme within the hospital. They had taken a leap of faith, bringing their young family of four children, with me being just six years old at the time and my youngest brother, six months. Quite incredible if you think about it. It is only now that I'm a mother myself and I think back and realise how hard it must have been for my mother, who was the medical director, and what dedication she had. I remember nights when the phone would ring late with a call from the medical centre about a patient that needed to see her, and she would get up and rush off to see how she could help, sometimes spending hours overnight there. Then she would get up the next day to get her children to school and childcare, and then off to continue her role at work again. Those were the early days. People often ask about the history of Castle Craig itself, about the estate and the building. First of all, it's not strictly speaking a traditional castle, and we don't really know why it's called Craig, although Craig is quite a common Scottish word meaning rock in Gaelic, and you find the word Craig in a lot of um, street names around Edinburgh. The estate itself goes back into the mists of time. There's actually a pagan stone circle in the grounds, and also a Roman military fort. Um, this is where patients now play volleyball and golf. The wizard Merlin was said to have been born in a valley nearby, just over the hill from Castle Craig. The current mansion house of Castle Craig was built by a wealthy family in 1798, which is the same year Napoleon was invading Egypt. The building itself has retained many of its original features, including magnificent fireplaces, marble pillars, exquisitely carved panelling and furniture, and many other features. After it left private ownership around the time of World War II, it became a hospital for the wounded in the war. And after this, it became a school for children with respiratory problems. Since it was purchased by the McCanns in 1988, the house and other buildings have been fully renovated to fulfil all the necessary requirements of a leading mental health hospital in the UK, while preserving the original feel of the estate. There are 50 acres of woodlands and gardens, that's the equivalent of 50 football pitches, at Castle Craig, with a lot of space for activities and therapies that have evolved over the years, such as equine therapy, alpaca walks, nature walks, fitness activities and outdoor therapy. Today, we are proud to be a world-renowned addiction treatment clinic, introducing recovery to the lives of over 10,000 people and their families. We are covered by a variety of UK and international healthcare insurers, and we've also run successful independent outcome studies. The most recent showed that 73% of our patients achieved long-term abstinence and 92% showed good overall improvements. We are inspected regularly by our governing body, Healthcare Improvement Scotland. And in our most recent inspection, we were awarded the grade of outstanding for leadership. And here's a nice story. Our current medical director, consultant psychiatrist, Professor Jonathan Chick, used to actually be an inspector for HIS, and he was so impressed by what he saw at Castle Craig that he applied for the role of medical director when it came up. In 2015, we opened Smarmel Castle Clinic in Ireland, which has helped many people from Ireland, Sweden, and the rest of Europe to recover from their addictions. The oldest part of Smarmel Castle, the tower, dates back to the 14th century, and the rest of the building is a little more modern. It is a 22-bed rehab clinic, and the treatment program is based on the Castle Craig model of addiction treatment. It even has a swimming pool with a spa, steam room and sauna, and a fitness gym for the wellness of patients. The medical director of Smarmore Castle is Dr. Hugh Gallagher, who is a very well-known and respected consultant in Ireland. In the year 2000, Castle Craig opened a centre in The Hague in the Netherlands, and Castle Craig Netherlands has been recognised as an outpatient mental health care facility for many years now. We have a network of offices around the country and our own team, including a medical director, consultant psychiatrists and therapists. And treatment for Dutch patients is approved and funded by a number of Dutch insurers. So what is our mission and what do we tell the world that we intend to do? How do we get people whose lives and families have been damaged by addiction to alcohol and drugs on the road to recovery? 
At Castle Craig, our vision of recovery goes beyond helping patients while they are just here. We want to help them get back on their feet, to know they can do this, and to forge their very best life with the therapeutic tools they need to stay abstinent from alcohol and drugs and live fulfilled lives in recovery. And we do this with compassion and respect for each person who walks through our doors. And I feel very strongly about this. Everyone deserves a chance to leave addiction behind, to change their lives and make their world a better place. They are not just addicts. These are people with families and stories who need a chance of a fulfilling sober life. And this is as true today as it was 30 years ago when we started. We aim to make the world a better place for people whose lives are affected by addiction, one person at a time and one day at a time. With the doors opening at Stockholm's Brunde Clinic, we are welcoming a new era of collaboration with Anna Schostrom, who has been part of our team for six years now, and who we are proud to have at our side in Sweden, with the rest of the experienced team, Peter, Agnes, Ursula, Matthias and Innes, to give Swedish people suffering from addictions the chance to live a new life. So I hope this has given you an idea about our story and how we got here. I hope that one day after coronavirus, I can welcome some of you to Castle Craig in Scotland and show you around the estate so that you can see for yourselves the magic that happens here. And I hope I'll also be able to visit Sweden soon. Now I'm going to hand you over to Mark, our senior therapy manager, to tell you more about the treatment and therapy program at Castle Craig. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. And Thank you, Anna, uh, for inviting me along. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. And firstly, I hope everyone can understand me. I have a quite a strong Scottish accent, um, so I'll do my best to, to speak slowly and clearly. Um, I come from Glasgow, and um, the main thing that I want to discuss this morning is the therapeutic programme and sort of break that down into um, specific strands, um, looking at pre-admission, looking at the sort of medically managed detox that we have here, looking at individual therapy, group therapy, family therapy, which is vital for patients, and then of course continuing care, after care. Firstly, I, I feel it's pertinent to mention that I owe my life, my own life, to Castle Creek. I came from um, Glasgow, and I am an ex-heroin addict. I was addicted to heroin. I started using drugs in my late teens, never intending to become addicted to something like heroin, and unfortunately became uh, an IV, IV drug user, and very quickly was put on a methadone maintenance program, which I was on for almost 15 years. So I was continuing to use methadone and continuing to top up with heroin. I was also prescribed benzodiazepines and anything really that I took, I took addictively, I took to excess. And when I hit a place in my life where basically life was not worth living, um, the drugs didn't work for me anymore, any relationships and family that I had really had sort of gone um, gone away and I reached out for help and came to Castle Craig around 15 years ago and I'm very passionate about what Castle Craig has to offer patients because I came through here and it is possible to recover from addiction I want to say that loud and clear it's also possible to recover from heroin addiction Many of my friends who came through Castle Craig at the same time as me were also opiate addicts who were regarded as hopeless, um, difficult, impossible to treat individuals. And today, like me, um, these friends are over 15 years in recovery, totally abstinent, totally abstinent. So Castle Craig offers a really intensive treatment package and First and foremost, pre-assessment, assessing patients is something that we do here. Um, we have to get to know why the patient is coming here. 
and we have a team here of extremely experienced consultants, psychiatrists, um, doctors and therapists who will assess patients before they arrive. We want to know that they meet alcohol or drug dependence. And we use, of course, the diagnostic manuals, ICD-10, DSM, to assess patients for these um, addiction issues. We also are acutely aware that patients come to Castle Craig and present often with dual diagnosis with other co-occurring psychiatric conditions. And I'll come on in a second to discuss that, that we are able to treat here at Castle Craig those other conditions. So when the patients arrive here, one of the important things that I want to mention is that Castle Craig is a unique treatment program because at the moment and for nearly one year, we have offered um, patients coming here a very um, specific COVID secure unit. So all patients come to one of our um, buildings here that has been set aside in 2020 for patients to be in an isolation setting in order for us to test patients for COVID. And we're very proud of the fact that we are um, probably in a unique position for offering patients that when patients come in, they're isolated, they're able to go through their detoxification or start their detoxification plus receiving COVID tests so that we are then um, in a position to um, know that patients are safe, that they're COVID free and that they can then come to the main part of the community, the main part of the building. When patients are here, of course, we have 24 hour nursing and medical care. So we are able to, along with the advice of the consultants, psychiatrists and doctors, we are able to offer a very tailored and specific detox plan. Again, for opiate addicts, we are able to look at that individually. We often use buprenorphine. On occasions, we will use methadone reduction programs here as well. And for patients with alcohol dependence, we use chlordiazepoxide, epoxide, Librium. And of course, we do have patients that present with benzodiazepine. We've seen a lot in recent years of increased use, particularly in the UK, of benzodiazepine addictions. And we're able to, again, taper and titrate patients um, correctly and um, safely off um, these drugs of abuse. Immediately when patients come to Castle Craig, they enter the treatment program. Um, the treatment program is an intensive psychotherapeutic model based, as Victoria has said, on the 12-step the philosophy. So our program is all about abstinence. It's all about giving patients the opportunity to be abstinent from alcohol and drugs. We don't tell the patients that they can control or cut down we don't tell the patients that when they leave here, it's safe for them to be continuing to use drugs of abuse. We explain clearly to the patient that our philosophy is about total abstinence. So this is where the individual therapy comes in. Individual therapists from the point that the patient arrives are assigned to work with the patient and the individual therapy team who I line manage work with patients here to help um, give the patients a very full comprehensive assessment and that assessment happens usually in the first two to three days. Individual sessions allow patients to um, discuss and open up about their life really, their full life experience. So no not only are we looking at the alcohol addiction or the drug addiction, we're looking at the full person's story so there's very specific interview um, processes that the therapists use to um, assess the patient for the clinical issues that they have to address here. At the same time, patients, again, immediately when they arrive, are involved in group therapy. In fact, in my view, group treatment that we offer here is a vital component of our programme at Castle Craig and the patients are involved in daily group therapy. So they have individual therapy with the, with the therapist and they have group therapy, which the therapists facilitate. We have a team 
at the moment of almost 15 counsellors and therapists and uh, we're able to provide a very structured programme really from morning through to the end of the evening, very structured programme. And the therapists are then able to provide in that first few days, an individual care plan, an individual treatment plan for the patients to work on. So by this, by this time, they will have been able to assess and to understand that um, the patient has not only addiction that they need to work on, but they may have underlying trauma issues or grief and loss issues or anger issues, family of origin, relationship problems, and the therapist is able to put these clinical issues into a care plan and present that within the first week, within the first five to seven days, they present the care plan to the patient in collaboration with the patient. And the, the, the most important process that we have here is the community, the therapeutic community, the patients being here, being together um, for the weeks that they are here our typical program is five weeks. Um, certainly four to six weeks is our typical program. And patients in that foundation care um, go through a very rigorous intensive treatment program, which includes individual therapy, group therapy, and also psychoeducational therapy. And what that entails is um, regular lectures and presentations and workshops that the therapy staff and other members of the team present again on a daily basis to the patients. And it's an extremely important process that the patients are going through here. At the same time, we, we do not forget and do not want to forget um, the family members, families have been affected greatly. I know that my family were affected greatly by my addiction. So again, with the patient's permission, which of course we always seek when they arrive, we wish to engage the family members. The therapist's role is also to, to conduct family therapy. So the family therapy involves um, the therapist contacting family members and inviting them to engage in family therapy or perhaps couples therapy. And again, it's the therapist's responsibility to set up and to facilitate those appointments. We also have, we're very proud to have a family recovery programme, which we call the Family Recovery Workshop, which is um, facilitated once a month by one of our uh, lead therapists, um, Terry Fairney, who is specialised in systemic therapy, family therapy. And this is a standalone family program that runs for the family members on their own. The patient does not attend that. The families have a two-day two intensive family recovery workshop where they can learn about how their addiction has, um, the addiction of their loved one has affected them and some of the tools and the skills that families need also to take into recovery. And really what that means is that when the patient comes here, they are getting treatment, the family are also getting treatment, and we have found that that full process is the most effective and most successful way for the patients to stay in recovery. If we don't treat the family or we don't involve the family, there is some, there is some opportunity that the patient may have to manipulate the family when they leave here or to have what we call codependency or enabling processes that we address here, they can continue. Those processes that are unhealthy can continue if the families are not involved in the therapy program here. So that's something that we're very um, uh, proud of and very keen to, to do is to um, include the family members in family therapy and the family recovery program. One of the things that is also vital that we do here, which again, you know, I'm extremely proud that we do offer is a continuing care program, an intensive continuing care program. My experience personally and professionally over the years has been that other facilities, um, 
offer perhaps a, a residential programme or a, a short detox programme, but then after no, nothing is, there is nothing provided for the patient. And of course, that often causes the patient to relapse quickly because they don't have a support package in place. And we have a very um, robust continuing care programme that we offer patients. Again, this is tailored, this is individual. We can offer individual ongoing therapy post-treatment. We can offer group therapy, aftercare therapy. Um, and this is a very individual thing that we can offer patients when they leave. But I think basically my message is that we don't leave patients when they leave here um, to sort of drift on in their first few days or weeks after they leave Castle Parade. We continue to engage them for many months. And in fact, our aftercare programme is really a sort of one year um, plus, one year plus aftercare programme. And again, we have found from doing our own research on that, that those patients that engage in continuing care aftercare programmes also do better versus the population who don't take aftercare options. So again, we, again with the therapists and the, the treatment team here, we um, are very much wanting patients to not, on, not only engage in our individual and group therapy, but also in our aftercare programmes when they, when they leave here. Um, briefly to mention, um, just before I finish, but briefly to mention the additional specialised therapy that we offer here, which I suppose comes under the individual and group um, component that I've just spoke about. We, we are very um, able here at Castle Creek to offer specialised treatment modalities for trauma treatment, particularly we use EMDR, trauma-informed care. We have a trauma group that we run here and we have individual clinicians, therapists who are specialised in EMDR. We offer group therapy and individual therapy for grief, which again is quite a co common co-occurring issue with addiction. Um, that patients often have underlying grief or loss. And we offer again a, a, a group therapy and individual counselling for grief issues. We also use dialectic behaviour therapy, DBT, and that's part of our standard programme now. Uh, all, obviously, Marshall Linehan, the founder of DBT, particularly for patients with borderline personality disorder, um, which we at times see here along with the addiction patients that present with um, access to disorders. And um, we used to only offer DBT for those patients that had that particular condition. Now we have it as a standard um, part of our weekly treatment program and all patients are able to develop those key skills of DBT, these grounding skills, these resource resource building skills. And that ties in very nicely with our, with our trauma therapy. And of course we have CBT, cognitive behavioral clinicians here as well, who are CBT trained and accredited, who are able to offer very specific therapy for patients with anxiety and depression. Again, that's a very common co-occurring condition with alcohol and drug addiction. We often see you know, long-term depressive disorders, anxiety disorders. So we use a CBT modality because it's evidence-based. We know that from the research and that's why we use it here. We always are guided by the latest uh, research modalities. And we're also using an exploring third wave CBT at the moment as well. Um, ACT, for example, is a, is a particular um, therapy that's um, particularly well used at the moment as well. So. So that hopefully gives a bit of a flavour of the, the process of the therapeutic programme um, to you and gives a, an idea of really the importance of, of abstinence and the 12 step philosophy that we purport that patients should adhere to when they're here. And of course, when they leave here, uh, many of the staff, including myself, are in recovery and um, continue to um, explain to the patients that abstinence and 12 steps are not just while they're here in rehab for five to six weeks. It's a lifelong program. It's a lifelong support package. And I, I suppose that in some ways the, the, the pandemic, you know, the COVID pandemic has allowed the 12 step fellowship meetings to go worldwide now. 
I still do my, my own recovery meetings and I join these on Zoom. And sometimes there's individuals there from Australia, America, England, who are on these meetings. It's a worldwide fellowship. So obviously when the, when the, um, the pandemic hopefully comes to an end at some point, the live meetings will happen again. But while we're all in sort of the lockdown situation, we have used um, Zoom and you know, other kind of platforms to allow our patients here to attend Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, and they're able to get a flavor and a real feel of the, the importance and the value of 12-step meetings. And of course, this is a thing that patients can and should use for the rest of their lives. And that's what will help them. But we don't forget the psychotherapy that patients need as well, not only while they're here, but after they're here. So the 12-step program can help them with their addiction, the recovery from their addiction, but the other issues that they may have, relational issues, other you know, conditions that they maybe need treatment for, we want patients to continue receiving treatment after Castle Craig. Um, and hopefully that gives you a, a flavor and an overview. And finally, I hope my, my accent has been understandable for you all this morning. And uh, I, I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you very much. And I'll pass back to Anna now. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I have never heard you so understandable in my well, life. <laughs> I think the key is talking slowly, really. Um, Scottish accents are still a puzzle to me. It, it, it can be quite thick and, and hard to understand. Yeah. Um, one absolutely brilliant thing of being uh, the CEO of, of uh, Stockholm's Beroende Klinik is that we are actually going to take care of the aftercare for all the Swedish patients or actually all the Scandinavian patients who come to Castle Craig or Smarmor will from now on uh, pay for their aftercare. It's included in their, in their, um, in their payment for the, for the inpatient treatment at the castle. So when they come back to Stockholm, we will basically meet them at the airport and give them a very intensive continuing. We'd, we'd like to steer away a little bit from the word aftercare uh, and say that what we are offering is, is a, a continuing care package, uh, which they have already paid for. Uh, and that's a very important thing, because if you offer it as a as something that's optional, we have the experience that people sometimes opt out. As, as Mark said, we know from both from research and our own um, experience that those people who keep engaged in their own recovery, that they continue doing, uh, going to meetings or going to a therapist and engage with the society around them, they do much better. So that's a very important part for us to take care of those patients in the future who come back from Castle Craig or more and more. Uh, I seem that there have been some action in the chat. Um, we would love to answer any questions you have about the program, uh, either in Stockholm or at Castle Craig. Uh, one thing that I would like to say is that uh, we will not only offer 12-step treatment in, in Stockholm, at Stockholm's Bureau in the Clinic. Our program will be based on Castle Craig's program. Uh, with a 12-step foundation, but then also DBT, CBT, and other kinds of therapy that's helpful for our patients. And we believe in, in longer treatment periods. So instead of using a short version of you know, 28 days or six weeks of out, outpatient, we are going for a six-month program. So six months in the, in the starting program and then uh, three months plus three months in what we call continuing care, because the, there's so much research to show that that recovery process actually has to take time and it does take time. So that's something that we believe very strongly in. And if you don't want 12-step treatment, we have other evidence-based programs and evidence-based tools under our roof. So we shouldn't, um, we should be able to, to tailor-made a treatment program for everybody who's interested in abstinence-based treatment. Uh, we got a question I know about how we, um, and I think that's something that could be brought up to the big group, how we handle patients with ADHD. And uh, that's a very good question. Uh, and um, 
we actually meet a lot of patients with ADHD. Some of them are medication on medication, some of them are not. Uh, what we ask them to do at Castle Craig is to go off there. So if they are on amphetamine-based medication, we ask them to go off the medication for du the duration of their stay at Castle Craig. And it usually works really well because it's a very strict program and it's a very structured environment. And then we try to help the patients with, with therapeutic instruments rather than medication. If medication is needed, we, uh, we do medicate uh, patients with ADHD, but we stay away from uh, potential addictive um, uh, medications. And in Stockholm, we are going to cooperate with doctors that are specialized in, in ADHD and addiction. It's a big patient group, so we need that, that in under our roof. So we are going to cooperate with the best in the field. Um, I'm looking in the chat. Uh, there's a question about uh, costs. That's a very good question. Uh, and, and it's a question that's not exactly easy to answer because we're still working on it uh, on our price list. We want to be totally transparent and we want to be uh, really clear in our message that uh, if you come to us, it's going to cost money. Mm -hmm. And it's probably going to cost a bit more than if you come to other treatment centers because our pr program is more intensive. It's longer and it's more intensive. Uh, so if it's okay with you guys, we can send out that information and when, about uh, our price list and how it's structured uh, because it doesn't feel right to answer it right now since we haven't really put down our foot on that. Um, okay. Do you want to come in on that, Peter? This no. is Peter. Yep. Hi, Peter Anderson here. Uh, no, that's uh, that's correct, Anna. We haven't uh, we haven't put down the foot on that, and and it's also like you said, there is a big variety of of, uh, of what you need and and uh, what we can offer. So. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a fixed price list, uh, and that's it. Uh, it's going to be uh, variations in the price list, but uh, we will uh, definitely come back with, with with all that. I think um, if I could just come in briefly and um, and introduce myself. Hello, I'm Dominic McCann, and uh, part of the part of the team. Um, I mean, I think the important thing to say there is that you know we're not aiming ourselves as some sort of high net worth treatment center for the very rich. Uh, we're very much targeting as much as we can various strata of society, middle class, professionals, and so forth. So we're certainly not aiming to be um, a treatment center for the very rich at all. That's certainly not our, our objective. Okay, any other questions? Um, there's, there's a question about uh, DBT and um, EMDR. Maybe if Mark, can you see that in the chat? Um, I mean, I just about DBT, <clears throat> I think that's not used at Castle Craig as a trauma therapy, if I'm correct. It's more for um, who, who is, who is uh, advised to attend the DBT groups, Mark? Well, so, so the DBT, you know, originally when we, when we were trained in DBT a number of years ago and when we um, gave DBT therapy, it was for patients that particularly had borderline personality disorder as per Marsha Linehan's um, manual um, that she wrote. However, her, her manual also um, was very clear about long-term group psychotherapy for DBT. Uh, and we decided um, probably about three, four years ago that it would be advantageous for all patients that are here to learn some of the skills and techniques that she offers in her program. And um, that has now been rolled out here for, for all patients. So Dominic's right, it's not to do with trauma therapy. We have a separate trauma therapy program, albeit some of the patients that would be going to that um, trauma group would also have um, personality uh, issues that would be beneficial in the DBT group. Um, we've found that the DBT group is effective for all of our patients because 
of that emotional regulation that is offered from DBT, the skills that teach people about emotional regulation can benefit all our patients here. We have often here at Castle Creek high functioning patients who, for example, have alcohol dependence, but have no other you know, co-occurring issues or illnesses. It's basically, they're here for their alcohol dependence. You know, they're high functioning people. They, they run their own business or they work in professionals, but still they would benefit from some DBT therapy. So. Can I comment on that? Um, I was the one who, who uh, wrote the question. Yes. Uh, the reason why I asked about that is because trauma treatment is uh, a part of DBT therapy. It's yes. the second phase of DBT therapy. And I was specifically wondering of whether or not you, because you mentioned, Mark, uh, that you conduct EMDR therapy. And uh, if you do, and then in the same sentence or like the sentence mm -hmm. before, you mentioned that you uh, uh, have some DBT uh, treatment for some patients, some of your patients. And in, uh, in the stage two of DBT, therapy once you have went through stage one which focuses on uh, addiction yeah. uh, quality of life interfering behaviors and so forth uh, suicidal behaviors of course if there are behaviors like that um, you carry on with trauma treatment and the trauma treatment in dbt um, is uh, in fact not emdr but um, a kind of pro prolonged uh, version of prolonged exposure yes. um, so that's the, that's the reason why i, I raised that question yeah, I, read, I read your sort of comment there amanda and, yeah you know, thanks we don't we don't sort of um and we wouldn't uh, have EMDR following on at sort of the end of the DBT. That would be separate. I see. Just, just, just to clear it out, um, yep. trauma therapy in DBT is not something separate from DBT. It's a part. It's integrated in DBT. Sure. Just uh, sure. um, sorry about being a, a no. very particular about things here, but no, I just wanted to, to respond. Thing. I think Mark, maybe the. Um, I mean, I know we're not doing a pure DBT program, yep. for example, which which can take a year or more. Right. I think. Yeah. Um, it's more of a DBT skills group. That's correct, yeah. So we take elements from the DBT manual and we, we actually run it over an eight week period here. Um, and uh, obviously those patients that are staying a shorter period, say five weeks, six weeks, are able to get some of those skills and the handouts that go along with those skills. And then we often give the rest of the patients the remaining, uh, the remaining skills through the, the following group sessions. If, if I can come in and say something about length of treatment, uh, we, are, we are, I think we're touching something when we're talking about DBT mm -hmm. because DBT is a long-term commitment uh, and it should be, and it's evidence-based if it is. And, and Mark said earlier that the uh, very normal treatment program at Castle Craig is maybe four to six weeks. Uh, and based on my personal um, experience from working for Castle Craig for seven years now, uh, something happened, something shifted in, in, in the patients and in, in, uh, what they could achieve in, 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 at Castle Craig and Smart More. When I started talking about Castle Craig, be, Castle Craig being a 12-week program, uh, because that's what it actually is. A lot of patients stay 12 weeks. And for me, and this is not research-based, this is just my experience. I can almost look at that group of patients, large group of patients that I have sent, mm -hmm. and I can look at their success rate and, 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 I can, and I can sort out those who stayed just for three or four weeks and those who stayed for 12. Because what happens if you stay for 12 weeks is that the longer you go into your own treatment period at the safe place like the Castle Craig, you get individualized therapy. So you get still get the groups, but you but you but you're starting to work really closely with your therapist into childhood trauma, abuse, really, I mean, really important um, stuff to take care of. Because if you don't, the the risk for relapse is going to go up. So uh, if I could choose, and everybody had all the money in the world, everybody should go to Castle Craig for twelve weeks, and then come back to us. For, for like three or six, six months of aftercare, but time is really important. And uh, one thing I've also learned to say to patients who are interested in coming to Castle Craig is they, they usually, I mean, it's a lot of money when you, when you, if you're a private patient and you're paying out of your own pocket and they really want me to give them confirmation and, and promises that you know, you're going to be all right. And I can't do that. Yeah. I mean, addiction is a really, really, uh, complicated 
uh, disease. Yeah. Even if we have a high success rate, there are no guarantees. But what I can promise you, I always tell the families and the patients, is that you're going to feel safe. That I can promise you. Because at Castle Craig, you, when you walk in the door, you can relax because you are surrounded by people who take care of you. You're there to recover. You're not there to work. You can be yourself. And that's, that's the foundation. If you don't feel safe, you can't recover. That's my strong belief. So th that's something that's so important at Castle Craig. And you, can, you can almost see it sitting in the lobby, seeing the new patients coming in. It takes like 10 minutes and their, and their shoulders go, <sighs> because they feel it in the air that I've come to a place where I can be safe and people are going to be kind to me. And that's so important. And if you have that kind of environment, magic can happen. So, so actually, I think time is a really important thing. Uh, there was another question popping up. Um, have we had any one from, that's a good question also, if we have had any patients that have gotten their treatment paid by Försäkringskassan or Socialtjänsten? Yes and no uh, is my answer. There is something called cross-border healthcare. There is a law that says that, that uh, citizens of the EU can choose to, to do their medical treatment in a hospital elsewhere in Europe if they want to. It's like the school paying. In Sweden, you take if you, if you're if you get cancer, you can choose to do your cancer treatment in Sweden, or you can go to Germany, and you can take the money with you. There's some some rules around this, quite strict rules, but we've had some success in the past with pa with patients who have gotten uh, their money back from the cross-border healthcare system. You have to pay it, and then you get it back. Uh, but lately, the system has been more uh, tough to the patients, and, and it depends a lot on where you live. Uh, in Stockholm, it's very hard to get approval for cross-border healthcare. It used to be easy, but now it, it's very tough. But in other parts of Sweden, uh, Landstingen and Försäkringskassan make another judgment. So yes, we've had, had some experience, and we're open. Even if we have not any, we don't have any plans to go into procurement, to uh, go in a, a Upphandling of socialtjänsten, we're open for patients coming from socialtjänsten uh, and also other uh, government organizations. It's just that we're not going to do any, uh, as, as it looks like right now, upphandling, but we're open for everybody who's interested in getting treatment for, with us. Okay, Victoria, it's 11.30 here. Do you want to close it? That's it. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, we really appreciate your time this morning and um, it's been great to see so many faces here and hopefully you've um, got quite a lot of background now and quite a lot of information. If you have any more questions, um, drop us a line, let us know. Um, follow us on LinkedIn as well and send us a message at any point and um, we'll get some extra information to you. Um, after this and um, yep hopefully soon we'll be able to welcome you again to Castle Craig um, and until then uh, keep in touch thank you thank bye, you bye thanks everybody thank you bye, bye.